Well, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll do this and then we'll be ready for the Grand Prix. Father, we do thank you again tonight for the privilege of, of coming around your word to hear you speak to us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who enables us to understand and comprehend your truth. And so we yield to his ministry in this moment and I ask you to honor your word in our hearts because we hear you bear fruit. And I pray that tonight you would do whatever needs to be done in each and every life that is here. Maybe some to accept Christ for the first time, others to be strengthened in their daily walk. We honor you and praise you and worship you in the precious name of Christ we pray. Amen. Well, we've been going through the 23rd Psalm and we're down to the 4th verse, which is probably the most familiar verse of all all the verses in the 23rd Psalm. And let me quickly remind all of us again that the key to understanding this Psalm is in the little phrase, in the house of the Lord. Usually we associate that with heaven. But that's not exactly what David is talking about here. In the house of the Lord is talking about His presence with us. So let me make this as clear as I know how to make it. If you've never accepted the Lord Jesus, if there's never been a time in your life when you realize that you were a sinner, separated from God, it doesn't matter how religious you may be, how faithful you may be to the church, what kind of life you may be living, if you've never done that, then you are not indwelt by the Holy Spirit. The only way the Spirit comes to live in you is when you realize that you're a sinner. Christ died on the cross for you. He took your sin debt and paid it. You confess your sin, repent of it, and invite Jesus into your life. And He comes to live in the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, that little phrase in the house of the Lord takes on meaning. I'm never apart from His presence. Because He lives on the inside of me and nothing can separate me from the love of God that's in Christ. So we've been working our way through these verses and David is telling us when we know that reality in our daily walk that Christ lives in us. In God's house, He has met my needs. There's no want. There's no fear. And when we come to this fourth verse, usually we associate this with death, and the grave. But the little phrase in the valley of darkness means far more than that. In the Hebrew, it describes a place of danger and destruction. It can be the grave. It can be death. But you and I walk through valleys every day that we live. Sometimes we're not ready for them. Sometimes we're not expecting them. But we do walk through those valleys. And David is telling you and me tonight when, and it's not if, your translation may say if, but it's not if, it's when. We're all going to go through those valleys. Many different experiences of valleys. Different shapes, different forms. We're going through them. And he's telling us tonight, when you do that, some of you came through one of those tonight, coming over here to church, through a valley of dark shadow. What do you do in that valley? And what he is saying to all of us, we saw last week, the reality of those shadows, we cannot escape it. God didn't put a shield around us when we became believers and said, no, you're immune to everything. And I was telling yesterday in the funeral I was preaching, this has been the most gigantic altar call that God's ever given America. And yet we're sleepwalking through it sleepwalking through it. We're living in a culture of fear. We're, some are in that valley, and it just doesn't seem to impress us at all. But David is saying when you go through that valley, you need to understand there will be the reality of it. We face those. Now what do you do when you face them? And the second thing we quickly looked at last Wednesday night, not only the reality of it, the deep, dark shadow, but the reaction to it. 
How do I react when the bottom drops out of my life? How do I react when I get that diagnosis? How do I react when something that I wasn't looking for and expected all of a sudden hits me in the face? What do I do with that? Well, here's what David said. When you go through that valley, I will fear no evil. The reaction ought to be no fear. Most of us respond out of our feelings and emotions and we think we can solve all of that. I uh, had to get blood work done yesterday morning over at Piermont and I was there a little after six and people were already there ahead of me and, and I told Becky when I got home, I, I sat there, I, had left, I forgot my phone. And I sat there and I watched all these people and most of them there was some kind of procedure. They had all those little packets. And they were just constantly on their phones. On their phones. I don't know what they were facing. You know, what? How do we react? And David is saying, you don't have to fear. Don't allow the emotion of fear to totally paralyze you. Doesn't mean that it's not going to maybe hurt or it's going to be difficult. But when you go through that valley of dark shadow, you sh don't have to fear. And when he says evil here, he's not talking about moral evil. Here it is distress, depression, the trouble, the worry, the anxiety. And when I am indwelt by God and I see it from His perspective, I recognize in the valley God's not trying to destroy me. He's molding me and shaping me to the image of His Son. I don't have to express that reaction and emotion of fear. Sheep are some of the most helpless animals in the world and anything will spook them. And we talked about the fact that that shepherd is on the journey. He started out at the sheep bowl in early spring and he's headed for the mountains where the grass will be green and the water will be fresh. And as they make their way through the countryside, they're going to go through valleys if you've ever been to Israel, especially from Jericho to Jerusalem. They don't know what's in that valley. You didn't know what was facing you when you left your house or work tonight. In that dark valley, there may be predators there, a snake, a wolf, a bear. There could even be thieves and robbers in there. You remember the story of the Good Samaritan. Something as small as a little animal could spook those sheep and create such panic in them that they would literally run away from the shepherd and head further into danger than they were with him. And that's the way a lot of us are as Christians. Or, I will fear no evil. And here's the reason, and I'll, we'll do this one and then you will get ready for the grand prix. Two reasons why we don't have to fear in this valley. Number one, because you are with me, David said. And what's interesting, in the Hebrew, David is now shifting to a second per, uh, first person pronoun. It's not third person anymore. He's addressing God directly. You are with me. And that pronoun you is personal. It's describing a particular relationship. And he's expressing a given fact. And if you're not a believer tonight, folks, you don't know that reality. You may be a good moral person. You may go to church. You may occasionally read the Bible. But you don't have that personal relationship. And so that pronoun you doesn't become personal to you. It was to David because he had met Jesus a long, a God a long, long time ago. He's expressing a given fact for all of us tonight. I'm indwelled by the Holy Spirit. I, I spent a Christmas in Jerusalem first when I went to Israel. And I was thousands of miles away from home and my family. And it, you know, if you let emotions control you, you would get lonely. I, I was with a group, but I wasn't alone. 
Christ lives on the inside of us. When I go into that valley of darkness, and that ought to be a hallelujah shout, I'm not going in there by myself. Christ lives on the inside of me. The Old Testament saints knew this promise. They knew that promise. Although they did not know the rea- every one of them did not know the reality of an indwelling Christ, they knew the promise. I will never leave you. I will never, ever forsake you. Wow, what a promise. That's why he's telling you and me tonight, you don't fear when you go into that valley. Hmm. What about you? In the presence of the Lord, when I'm in that dark valley, and it may hit some of us tomorrow, it may be next week, may be next year. Or maybe you've been in a valley and you're just coming out of it. If you are a believer, you have that assurance that He is with you. Now, that little, we don't pay much attention. That's why I always tell the students, every word in the Bible is important, folks. The little preposition with has the basic idea of fellowship and companionship. He is with me. Even in the suffering, He is with me. It expresses a close relationship. And what's interesting about this little preposition with, the root from which it comes is the word Emmanuel. Mm. That's the name of God. And literally that means God with us. What a tremendous truth. He lives in me. I am in Him and He is in me. And therefore, His presence is with me when I'm going through that valley. Wow. That's why I don't have to fear. I don't have to fear. Doesn't mean I'm not going to suffer or not going to hurt, but I don't have to fear. Let me, I'll close with this so we can get to the Grand P. When, during the Vietnam War, I had a very uh, close friend that was in the Marines. He, he and his family lived behind us on Third Avenue in Laurel. And one day the chaplains came to the house of the Walters to say to them, your son was stringing Bob wire in the DMZ zone and he was hit in the back of the head by a sniper's bullet and he's dead. And then they said, we wanted to give you something they found on his body. It was a little piece of paper. And I'll read what that paper said to you. Isaiah 41, 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not, be, do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Jerry carried that scripture with him into battle. And now they were giving that piece of paper to his mother and his daddy. Wow. Goodness. Do not fear. I am what? With you. Don't just say the 23rd Psalm is something to memorize. Bring these truths down into your daily walk. If you know the shepherd, you're in his care. And so again, I challenge you tonight, if you've never accepted Jesus, if you've never understood that you're separated from him and a sinner, that you so desperately need him, and you do need him, folks, more than you know, You can just simply pray this prayer tonight. Dear God, I confess to you that I'm a sinner. I I repent of my sins. I ask you to forgive me. 
I invite Jesus Christ into my life. I accept Him. I receive Him as my Lord and my Savior. And the moment you do that, He comes to live in you, and you are never out of His presence. Even in the valley of deep, dark shadow. Wow. Let's pray together and then we'll let Shan and Sherry take over. Father, we thank you so much for the promises in your word. You do your work in lives tonight. You know each individual person that's here. You know their relationship to you and those that may not know you, I pray that you would draw them to the Savior. Those of us who do know you, that we might have that absolute assurance and confidence. I am with you. We love you and honor you and praise you. In the precious name of Christ we pray. Amen.